absolutely no. Let, let, let me. Nobody is accounting for what they're spending. No. You got people and families out here in the United States that are struggling. I just paid six hundred dollars worth of utility bills in one week. Yes. All right. I haven't got enough money to feed my family, but I make too much to get food stamps. I don't even make ten dollars an hour. Right. Now, if you took that money and subdivided it between the taxpayers in this country, we would stimulate the economy. You know why? Because we'd go out and pay off bills, pay off tax debts, create jobs, and buy stuff that we need. Caller. That's how you stimulate the economy. Uh, I'll take my answer off the phone. Thank you. I appreciate it. Completely. Okay. And, and I understand that frustration. Quite frankly, I'm equally frustrated as you are. I'm not necessarily in your particular experience or circumstance to be that frustrated by but I'm frustrated too but it's because of the misconceptions out there that things were done that are misunderstood we did not give the 700 billion dollars for the purpose of uh, uh, lending money that was never in the program it was uh, it was misconstrued initially and put together with the suggestion by the secretary of treasury that we would be buying what we called uh, dirty assets uh, uh, defective mortgages and securities that were held in these banks that the government would find a way to create a market, buy them in, take them off the balance sheets of the banks so that the banks could continue to function normally. Did you support that? Plan? I supported that, but also part of the bill. We gave the jurisdiction and authority to the Secretary of Treasury to make investments in banks. He had very wide authority because, quite frankly, we're not the experts on the Hill as to how to solve this problem. And the problem is a multifaceted problem, so we gave great flexibility to the Secretary of Treasury to act. So what, act. what would you say, though, then, to somebody who says Paul Kanjorski is supporting Wall Street but not Main Street with this latest $825 billion package now moving the, through the House? They are right to this extent. Why did we do that? We did that because the Secretary... Look, I was there when the Secretary and the... Uh, Chairman of the Federal Reserve came those days and talked with members of Congress about what was going on. It was about September 15th. Here's the facts, and we don't even need to talk about these things. On Thursday at about 11 o'clock in the morning, the Federal Reserve noticed a tremendous drawdown of uh, 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 money market accounts in the United States to the tune of $550 billion dollars was being dr drawn out in a matter of an hour or two. The Treasury opened up its uh, 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 window to help. They pumped $105 billion in the system and quickly realized that they could not stem the tide. We were having an electronic run on the banks. They decided to close the operation, close down the money accounts, and n announce a guarantee of $250,000 per account so there wouldn't be further panic out there, and that's what actually happened. If they had not done that, th their estimation was that by 2 o'clock that afternoon, $5.5 trillion would have been drawn out of the money market system of the United States, would have collapsed the entire economy of the United States, and within 24 hours, the world economy would have collapsed. Now, we talked at that time about what would happen if that happened it would have been the end of our economic system and our political system as we know it. And that's why when they made the point, we've got to act and do things quickly, we did. Now, Secretary Paulson said, let's buy out the subprime mortgages. That's what he came to Congress. But he said, give us latitude and large authority to do many things as we decide necessary and give us $700 billion to do that. Shortly after we enacted our bill with those very broad powers, the U.K. came out and said, no, we don't have enough money to buy toxic assets. We're, instead, we're going to put our money into banks so that their equity grows and they're, they're not bankrupt. And so uh, it, the U.K. started that process, and that's true. It was much cheaper to put more money in banks as equity investments than to start buying their bad assets because it became early determined that we'd probably have to spend 3 or $4 trillion dollars of, of, of taxpayers' money to buy these bad assets. And we didn't have, we only had $700 billion. So Paulson made a complete switch, went in and started p putting money and buying securities and reinvesting in the banks of the United States. Why? Because if you don't have a banking system, you don't have an economy. And, we, and, and although we did that, it wasn't enough money, and as fast as we did that, the economy has been falling. And the reason last week 
we're really no, no better off today than we were three months ago because we've had a decrease in the equity positions of bank because other assets are going sour by the moment. Now, we've got to make some decisions. Do we pour more money in? To what extent that money goes in? I myself think we ought to take the time, analyze where we are, have the people understand. When you listen to a lady that just got off the telephone, she is near panic, and she doesn't think her government's acting properly or acting in her behalf. I think it's important that we start informing that lady as to what really were the facts, what happened, and get input from her. Uh, maybe she has a better idea. You know, we're not any geniuses in economics or finance. You know, we're representatives of the people. We ought to take our time, but let the people know this is a, dear, a, a very difficult struggle. Somebody threw us in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean without a life raft. And we're trying to determine what's the closest shore and whether there's any chance in the world to swim that far. We don't know.